If you want to emulate PlayStation 2 on the go, there haven't been many affordable options for a long time. The Windows handhelds that can handle PS2 games well are easily in the $600 to $1,000 price range, and actual PlayStation 2 portables are just as expensive. I get asked a lot why I don't talk about PS2 emulation on Android, or why I have negative statements about it whenever I do talk about the subject. Today, we are going to take an in-depth look at PlayStation 2 emulation on Android, where it is, why it sucks, and some cheaper alternative options. First, let's go over the two emulators that currently exist. On one side, you have the Play emulator, which is free and open source. It has low to non-existent compatibility with most games, but it does receive regular updates. Based on the GitHub page, the most recent changes to the emulator came this week. Even though the emulator doesn't run well on Android right now, as you'll see in a moment, all of the work done by its development is to the betterment of everyone since the code is open source. It takes a lot of time and effort to do something like this, and the developer is only bringing in less than $100 per month with the support of his patrons. Just to put this into perspective, the Citra emulator brings in 3 times this amount, and the Wii U emulator brings in 27 times it. Obviously, with that last one, there is a clear and added benefit to immediately supporting the project, but it still illustrates the point. On the other hand, we have the Damien PS2 emulator, known more commonly as PS2 emulator, Damien PS2, PPSSPP, PS2, PSP, PS2, EMU. The best part about this thinly veiled attempt to steal traffic from the PSP emulator is that Damien can't even play PSP games. This emulator is free with a ton of ads and limited options, or with no ads and a one-time fee. It costs $10 on the Google Play Store and $6 here in China. Scummy naming practices aside, it's completely closed sourced, has online only DRM, and requires a ton of invasive permissions to run. Until very recently, it also saw almost no meaningful app development for years. There's also the whole side point of the developer stealing his code from the PCSX2 emulator that I'm not even going to bother going into in this video, since the Damien team denies it every time someone talks about it, even though that is most likely the case. With the popularity of the app, the developer has probably brought in a quarter of a million or more from app sales, data packages for downloading ROMs, and ad revenue from free users, but none of the app development that comes from the money benefits anyone else except for the Damien team. Now that we've got that baseline out of the way, I have a very exaggerated example to illustrate the performance gap between these two emulators at this point. On phone number one, I'm using the Play emulator running on a Snapdragon 888 processor and the Red Magic 6 phone. On phone number 2, I'm using the Damien PS2 emulator version 4.0 running on a Snapdragon 636 processor and the Redmi Note 5 Pro. I picked this phone because it's the weakest Android phone that I've accessed to. The 636 is by no means a bad processor, but the difference in power between these two phones is enormous. I have a total of 4 games that we're going to examine in this section, and we're going to start off each game using the Play emulator on the Red Magic 6. For our first game, let's take a look at Final Fantasy X, since that is a game that has traditionally always been able to run well on Damien. The FPS counter is cut off on the Play emulator, so focus instead on the FPS counter from the phone itself. Okay, now let's take a look at the same game on the 636. No problem. The game still isn't running full speed, but it is running a lot better. You can see the FPS counter on screen with this phone, but you should probably just ignore it since it's bogus. For the second game, let's take a look at Kingdom Hearts 1 on the Red Magic 6. Unfortunately, this game crashes when you get to this point and it doesn't progress further. Before this point, it was running very slow. Here it is again on the 636. It's running a little slow, but it is at least playable. Now for something where the gap isn't as large. Here's Kingdom Hearts 2 on the Red Magic 6. Here it is again on the 636. And finally, I was able to find one game that ran worse on the 636. Here's Odin's Fear on the Red Magic 6. And here it is again on the 636.
What's the takeaway from this test? Basically, even with the most powerful processor that you can currently buy, the Play emulator isn't at the point where it can compete or be a viable option against a budget Snapdragon processor running the Damien PS2 emulator. That's the reality of the situation. With that in mind, let's turn our attention to the Damien PS2 emulator itself to see what it's like to use the emulator before finishing up with what I believe is a far superior option. When you first install Damien PS2, you are going to be greeted with some of the harsh realities of using this emulator. It requests location access as a way of serving you ads and phone access for who knows what reason. The ads that you see and the severity of the ads themselves also varies depending on where you live. If you install the version 3.3 from the Google Play Store, you'll get ads from Google that are fairly harmless and can usually be dismissed immediately or after a few seconds. On the Chinese version, the ads are way worse in severity and in length. Since version 4.0 isn't out yet and version 3.3 is utter trash that should not be used, you will see this through the experience of using this in China. After you accept the app permissions, you'll be prompted to do a bunch of extra nonsense that will cause you to watch a ton of ads. Whenever you want to play a game, you will need to generate a coin from watching an ad. If for whatever reason you get the desire to load a save state after you've just started up a game, that will cost you one more ad. If you switch over to another app on your phone and then come right back to the emulator, that's going to cost you another ad. Even exiting out of the game will cost you another ad. This repeated bombardment of ads is supposed to ultimately get you to fork over the $10, but you don't really get anything else for that money over the free version. There are a lot of options that are not accessible unless you pay money, but none of them really do anything. If a game doesn't load with the default settings, it won't magically work using the available presets for best compatible or fastest frame rate. The one setting that does matter over everything else is the default rendering resolution. For some dumb reason, this is set to 2x out of the box, which requires a really powerful phone to use. As an example, here's Kingdom Hearts again with the rendering resolution set to 2x. And here it is again with the 1x setting. Fortunately, you can change this in the free version of the app, but this is only if you use the app with the 1x setting from the get-go. If you have started to use the app with the 2x setting and later change it, you'll notice that you won't actually be able to use the lower option. If you have the paid version of the app, it also won't go any higher. This will only happen for any game that you have opened the game parameter settings window and then afterwards hit save and exit. Fixing this awesome feature is going to require you to do a complete reinstall of the app and eat five more ads. Just make sure that you don't open up the game parameter settings option and you won't ever have to deal with this. Before just recently, none of this trouble was even worth going through since the emulator was trash even on high-end phones. The 4.0 update makes the emulator somewhat decent even for low-end phones like the 636. The only other downside besides the ads in the free version and crazy app permissions is the always-on DRM. If you are going to be forced to always have an active internet connection to use the emulator, you are better off going with the alternative option that is free for better performance and compatibility. For this method, I'm going to use Steam Link to stream PS2 over from my mini PC. You'll need to be on the same network as the PC or have a VPN connection to your home internet. If this isn't an option for you, there are plenty of streaming services that will allow you to stream the PS2 emulator to your Android device, but that's beyond the scope of this video. The first step that we need to handle is adding the Steam emulator to our library. Click Add a Game at the bottom, and then click Add a non-Steam game. In the next window that comes up, click Browse, and find the .exe file for the emulator on your computer. Then, click Add Selected Programs. After that, the program will be listed in Steam, and it will be available in Steam Link. Back on your device, launch Steam Link from the App Store. It should scan and correctly find the computer running Steam on your network. Select the computer and complete the pairing process. It will conduct a network test after the device is paired. If you're using a 5 GHz connection, you should not have issues getting to 100. If you do, head into the streaming settings and change the quality of the video. Because I have a 5 GHz connection, I'm going to set my video quality to beautiful. 
You can also configure the controller that you'll be using or go with the touchscreen controller. If you're lucky, the emulator will pick up your controller without any extra work. If you're not, you'll have to configure them on the computer. And that's all there is to it. With this method, you're only limited by your connection speed and the computer that's emulating the game. As long as your phone has the ability to connect to a 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal, this will give you the best compatibility and performance possible at this point. Damien might be a lot better than the Play emulator with its current 4.0 release, but it's nowhere near as good as the official emulator. As long as Damien has online-only DRM, this workaround makes perfect sense to use. Hopefully this video helped you learn the ins and outs of emulating PS2 on Android. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. I did a larger video showcasing how to set up a bunch of other emulators for Android that you can see on screen now. If you have any other questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Happy gaming everyone, talk to you out.